Hey everybody, I think I'm on. Welcome, it's Free Tip Friday. And I'm Kate Richburg here at beadshop.com. And it's a great Friday. It's the last Friday of the year, the last Friday of 2018. So I'm checking the feed here, seeing if people are jumping on. And we're gonna get started. We're gonna talk all about jump rings today. Um, jump rings, I think, are a real essential for your toolbox. Hey, there's my mom. Hi, mama. <laughs> and I think that there is a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of questions I think I get uh, about, you know, when do I use jump rings or when do I wrap something or how do I get jump rings to stay on, all of those things. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, good morning, everybody. I see everybody jumping on. I'm just going to double check my feed here to make sure that uh, I can see all of your comments because I'm going solo today. Everyone's working real hard getting your orders and everything out. So we are uh, just kind of winging it today. I am on my own. But you know what? I got this. <laughs> all right. Great. Hello, everyone. Let me scroll through and see who's here. Yes, Tammy and Suzanne from Finland and Lynn and Bonnie and hello Faye from Canada everybody it's great to see everybody welcome welcome there's my friend Tanya oh it's great and Susan your very first Facebook live episode that's great I'm glad you're here it probably are you're off for the holidays so it's great that you could join us midday well great well welcome everybody um and uh Everybody, Faye says hello to everyone behind the scenes. Everyone's saying hello back to you, Faye. <laughs> you got a big hello from Kara. She's filling as we speak. All right, so <clears throat> jump rings. Let's talk jump rings. So those of you who are in our Facebook group, uh, beadshop.com, the bead table, and if you're not, I urge you to jump over there, search Facebook, um, uh, bead shop community, the bead table, answer three quick questions and I will let you in, jury you into the group. It's a lot of fun and it's a great place where people post projects, people post um, questions and so jump rings is something that I get a lot of questions about and so I thought it would be a great way to wrap up the year with just looking at uh, how jump rings and how they work. All right, so I am going to move the camera. Okay, and then I'm going to, so you guys can see what I'm seeing, and uh, let's, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera, so bear with me here. I'm going to swing this all around. I'm trying not to give you guys too much of a, of a, there we go, bear with me. Coming around, coming around, coming around, there we go. Trying not to get you guys too seasick here. Look, see, you can see my phone. Look at that. Let me move that out of the way here, out of our view. And let's get this camera all straightened out. There we go. That's looking pretty good. What do you guys think? It's not too bad of a, of a view here. Let me see what my hands look like. Let's see, where are my hands? There they are, not too bad. I'm gonna scoot over maybe a little bit. Maybe I'll scoot the camera over just a touch, okay? And you guys, can you hear me okay? Feeling, you can hear me all right? Am I loud enough? There we go, that's what I'm looking for. All right, I can do this. I can man the camera and teach all at the same time. All right, beautiful. Let me see for your perspective, and I think you guys can see what I'm doing, and I'm coming up a little closer, a little further away. All right, good. I think we're set. Let me get my positioning back in, and we're good. All right, great. Audio is good. Great. Good. Looks like Gita's feeling better. Awesome. Um, yeah, personal, that's right, Kim Crawford, Crawford, the personal one on 71, that's right, it's a, it's a personal class, just for all 90 of you who are watching right now, all right, I love it, that's right, just you and me, and 90 other people, awesome, all righty, okay, you guys, so let me show you what I've got here, I went over to the wall, 
um, the, the jump ring wall in the office. And I grabbed every jump ring we have. Okay. Grabbed them all. So that we could kind of talk about them a little bit and you could see uh, some of the differences here. Okay. So starting out on this side, uh, on beadshop.com, there's a whole um, category just on jump rings. So uh, these are the four millimeter ovals, right? And then everything else we have uh, is round, all right? And so we've got four millimeter rounds, five millimeter rounds, six and seven millimeter rounds. That's uh, all the sizes we carry for now, anyway. <gasps> Gita, Gita's on the linking, that's awesome. Oh, Lisa, I wish you could come visit. You know, we're online only. We don't have a store, so I'm sorry that you can't come visit, but I am planning some bead ins during the new year if you're local in the Bay Area. Um, so we're going to, uh, we'll have uh, more information on that. So there will be times when we can be together live and in person. Um, but I would, Lisa, love uh, for you to come visit me <laughs> because we could use some packaging help. No, just kidding. We're doing just fine. That elicited a, a, a laugh from Kara in the other room. So good thing. Um, so like I was saying, oval jump rings, round jump rings over here. Now, I will, yes, Angela, I will cover making some jump rings. I've got some wire over here that, uh, I'll peek it in right over here, that we're going to talk about as well, okay? But first, let's talk about the ready-made jump rings. So, the way that jump rings are, or at least should be made, for them to work okay, I'm going to grab this 5 millimeter. The jump ring should have a nice, there, am I in the, am I in the shot? There we go. It should have a nice, um, let me get kind of tight here so you guys can see this. A nice, clean, clear, or a clean, flush cut on the edges. Okay. <laughs> no, Tammy, I won't give away your job. Don't you worry. <laughs> You can come and package for us anytime. So let me open this up so you guys can see. This jump ring, as I open it, you really want to see how that jump ring has a flush end. Okay? Sometimes you get jump rings that have a little pointy cut on the ends. That pointy cut is not going to make a very well closed ring, okay? And that's when we say that jump rings will jump off of your project, okay? So if you have jump rings in your stash, what you want to do is you want to get them out, you want to look at them, and you want to make sure they have flush ends, okay? Greatly magnified to show you guys. Let me do a little quick little drawing here on my post-its that I have next to me. Um, <laughs> well, Tammy, I'll, I'll let you know, actually. We may have to have to uh, call in our, our what's, what's it called, our B team. Not our B team, but, you know, the crew that comes in to do, like, the extra filming and stuff, whatever that is called, you know, our extra crew. So here's my jump ring drawn for magnification, okay? That's the flush end that we want. Check your jump rings because if your ring, I'll draw an oval one here, sometimes when jump rings are cut, especially if you make your own, you have kind of this pointy little end on one end, okay, and a nice flush end on the other, all right? This is a no-go, okay? This is what we're going for. Yay, this ring, okay? So, this is a six millimeter, six millimeter jump ring, and the gauge of wire is about an 18 gauge. Let me get in kind of tight so you guys can see that, okay? 
This is, I think, a really good all-purpose jump ring. The other all-purpose jump ring that I use a lot of, this is kind of my go-to, 5 millimeter, 18 gauge. Okay, It's actually somewhere between 18 and 16 gauge, actually, when it's, if we're going to be really super technical. So... Let's open this up. To open a jump ring, well first I'm going to actually close it because we want to measure it. The two tools that you're going to need to open and close jump rings, you need a chain nose plier and I like a bent chain nose. Okay, One of those, oh thank you Gita for linking that how to open and close jump rings. It's a really great skill builder. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold this bent chain nose in my left hand and my flat chain. Oh, you know, Janice, soldering is a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing today, but let me just say with soldering jump rings, if I were soldering this ring, and let's say I had a chain or something over here, I would, the path of my torch would be away from the rest of the piece. So again, let's say chain is like maybe like this pencil, so it's over here, right? And I'm soldering, I put it flat on my surface. My torch path would be going this way, away from everything else. And I might use a third hand or something that would be a heat sink to draw the heat away from what's behind it, if that makes sense, okay? Um, so to open and close these jump rings, I hold one side very firmly with my bent chain. And this other guy, I just give it a little twist. Okay? And that, you can see as I turn it, see how it opens my jump ring up really nice and easy? But if you look at the round ring, it's still round. Okay? I haven't come in and grabbed it. Let me close it. I haven't come in, grabbed it, and opened, well, I can't even do it with these pliers, but right, like open it out, right, like like this, so that the, let me make that a little bit bigger, so that the ring kind of collapses, so it's no longer round, okay? That's just sad. And once a jump ring like this is no longer round, no power on earth is going to help get it nice and round back. Okay, if that makes sense. So let me do that one more time. Let me open this up, this ring up, so you can see me open. Open, open. I'm going to hold it with my bent chain. And I always hold these rings, my rings, so that the join is pointing up at 12 o'clock. Does that make sense? So if the 12 o'clock number of the clock is up here at noon or at 12, that's where my join is pointing. So then I just come in grab it, and do a little twist in my hands. One towards me, one away, and there it is. And you can see I've got a nice big opening to uh, put whatever it is I need to add my ring onto. Okay. So, like I said, this 5 millimeter 18 gauge ring is kind of my go-to. Okay. Now, if it were open, I just closed it really quick, but let me close it slowly so you guys can see what's going on. Let me get a little tighter so you guys can really see what's going on here. Now, when I'm opening and closing jump rings, you guys, I am having both of my hands work to in, you know, in tandem, together. My left hand is still holding, or my non-dominant hand, my left hand, is still holding this bent chain, and my dominant hand is holding the regular straight chain nose. Now, without having a death grip, right, I don't want to act as if this were a lifeline and the death grip on my pliers are marking my rings, okay? Oh, great question, Karen. Hold that five millimeter inside or outside diameter question for a second, okay? And I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about sizing in a minute. So to close, not only do you have to close your jump rings this way, 
if it's closing back and forth like this. I kind of work it back and forth as I go. And as I'm working the ring back and forth, I'm work hardening this join on the opposite or the bottom. Well, it's not really a join, but it's like where the elbow joint would be on the bottom of this ring. So it's work hardening the ring and keeping the join on the opposite end closed. Does that make sense? So not only do I have to have it closed in this plane, but I also need to make sure that if I turn it, you guys can see. There you go. You can see that it's closed in this direction as well. So it's closed if this is the ring. It's closed here, this way. But it's also closed this way, right? Does that make sense? So you're looking at two locations, here and here at the top, if that makes sense. Okay. So for measurement wise, let's take a look. Okay. Twisting till it clicks. Well, kind of, Angela. Let me show you. Let's let's open one that's even bigger. Okay. It's not so much a click as it is you can feel the ends kind of butt up to each other, okay? Oh great, thanks Gita for linking that uh, for the, the 16, uh, the, the gauge sizes. And Janice and I, actually in the new year, it's one of our resolutions, we're going to go through and really measure every jump ring so that we have the exact dimensions. So Christina, yes, the click means the ends pressing up against one another. That's exactly right. So let me get this in kind of tight. You guys can see. If I'm opening, I'm holding that side that kind of stays stationary with my non-dominant hand with the bent chain. And I grab the other end and I just kind of push that forward and I pull this hand towards me, okay? So I'm gonna come back in and now I'm gonna close it. Now to close, as I'm closing, let me get as close up to the camera as you guys, as I can. I can feel my little ends kind of pushing against each other as I'm working. See, and listen to that click. Let me see if you guys can hear it. Of course, I'm now I can't hear it. There we go. Did you hear that? That little click was the end of the jump ring pressing against the other end. Okay? I've got a real death grip on these tools. Let it up, Kate. Okay? So, yeah, it's that click. Right, exactly. There it goes. And so I can feel those little ends, you know, get in nice and tight. Oh, good. I'm glad you heard it. Great. And I'm checking to make sure that my ring is closed this way and I can feel it or this way okay so I would say get out your jump rings and just practice opening and closing opening and closing but it's that back and forth motion see that that I'm doing and that's you want to just brush those ends past and then they just kind of snuggle in place like that Okay, so here, and if you need to, you can come in and you can straighten the whole ring, all of my, since I've been kind of heavy-handed with this ring, it's a little misshapen, but it's not too bad. Okay, yeah, just breathe in and out, Joanne. All of us are holding our breath right now, right, looking at these jump rings. So breathe in and breathe out, right? It's just, we'll just work on that death grip, right? And then, I, if I need to, I can just come in. So, let's see. Uh, what did you ask, Angela? Show keeping the ring straight from all planes. Yep. So, if I'm here and here. Oh, yeah, Deb, that's awesome. Um, I have a few kind of fun, simple chain mail uh, recipes 
or techniques that I'm going to start showing you guys in the new year. Um, and you guys will really start going gangbusters at getting it closed. So, oh great, Judy, hold that thought because I'm going to show you about the rings that are a little pointy on one end. You can probably um, cut them and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's open this again. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to open one and I'll put this down. I'll make a couple of little links so they're closed. Okay, so you guys can see these in action. All right, let me get out a few more. Okay, you know, you guys, I, you know, coming from the world of soldering and metalworking, I am not a big fan of gluing jump rings. I think that if they're closed and you use the right size, you won't have the problem of them coming apart. Glue and metal, not really a thing so much. Because if there's space, that glue isn't going to fit, isn't going to close that gap, really. Your jump ring is either closed or it's open. Okay. Um, you know, we have mostly base metal rings. And these base metal rings are made of brass. Okay. The brass is very tough. Very... Um, solid, very sturdy, and it's not very malleable, okay? And so that malleability or the hardness of that ring helps to keep everything closed. And then the plating over the top, it's either plated in copper like this one is, or gold uh, or silver, whatever colors, but that plating is over the top and that also helps to work harden it, okay? So the brass metal, uh, base metal plated rings, I think are great. That being said, when I make my own jewelry, I make a lot of jump rings out of gold filled and copper, or not copper, well I do make some out of copper, but gold filled and sterling wire. Um, you know, but it's the malleability of, or the hardness of the metal. So it's not really the material. Okay, you want your jump rings to be nice and work hardened. Okay, and that's also why when you are opening and closing this ring, why I rotate that ring, let me get it into the right position, why I rotate it back and forth, because I'm work hardening right here, I'm work hardening that joint. All right. So when I go to close it, just like so, I've stiffened that ring. So it's, the metal is much less malleable, okay? And it'll stay put, all right? Yeah, I have um, tried those locking rings. I like them, but they're not practical for everything. They're more practical, I think, if I'm using a pendant or something that's fancy. Um, you know, and I want something that's a, a little more sturdy. They're a little heavy. Okay, so can you see? Now that's all nice and closed. So, but let me go back to, let me close another one. I'm going to close this one. And a simple, even just, this is kind of a basic thing that you learn when you're starting with chainmail. Not that we're going to do chainmail today. Um, but I've closed two jump rings like this, and now I'm going to open two. So unlike wire, it doesn't weaken when you go back and forth. Well, Gita, you don't want to pass or push this wire beyond its uh, beyond its limits, right? So if I'm working back and forth like this, let's see. I have this jump ring, and I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Let me see if I can make this break. There we go. Finally. Okay, and that broke apart. All right. But you can see I was going crazy with this jump ring, right? But let me get those out of the way. But if I were just coming in with controlled movements, opening it up, let's add these other two rings here. I'm going to close. This is just a two and two chain. I'll close that up. 
And see, I'm going back and forth maybe once, twice, three times if I can get it. There we go. Okay. Bam. Right? So that looks good. Now I'll get my second one. Okay, yeah, you won't go that crazy. Good one. All right. Hi, Manaz. How are you? Welcome. It's good to have you. And then we'll do this one over here. And we'll close this. This one. Okay? Back and forth. And so those movements, again, are fairly controlled and small. Okay? So here is a little 2 by 2 link. It's kind of hard to tell because there's just two of them. But let me do a third. Okay? So a really simple 2 by 2. You just scoop it in there. Close it up. And I'll put one more in there. Okay, and we'll do this one. Did I grab the right one? Yeah. Great. So now you can see how I've got just that little two by two, but that's kind of a basic kind of chain mail uh, technique. But you can also see how I just kind of started to use those jump rings, uh, those jump rings in action. Okay, so let's put this aside for a second and let's talk about jump rings that maybe would have that little um, point or that little point on the end. Okay. So, yeah, just a simple two by two, Ma. Just doing these guys right here, it makes a really nice chain, and you could wire wrap beads to it or whatever. But, right, it's super, super simple. And you just keep going along and making some rings and, you know, putting maybe a wire wrapped bead component in between. You know, it doesn't get any simpler than this. Okay. But let's, or you could do this with two colors. I could do this with silver and copper, or I could, you know, brass and gold, or, or brass and copper, whatever. But it's a kind of a fun, easy way to, uh, to just jump in and practice your jump rings. Okay. But let's say that you had a ring that had a little point on the end. Okay? Now that little point... Let me see if I can get an even tighter. One side would be nice and flush, and the other side is kind of a little pointy, right? All I would need to do is I'd need to get a flush cutter, like your trusty Zuron flush cutter, and I'd cut, come in with the flush side and clip. I'm going to clip with the tip of that. There it goes. And that flush side of my cutter, and you can see, it's cut, again, giving me a nice straight flush up and down. Okay? So I would test, if you have a really good flush cutter, this maxi shear is a great one, you can just slice that little point off. Okay? Jump in and practice your jump rings. Teresa, I wasn't even thinking about how, uh, how clever that was with the pun. Totally true. Um, oval jump rings, I agree, Kim Crawford, and we are going to be adding more jump rings in the oval world. Let me pull out an oval one. Okay. Um... And yes, Lisa, it is important which way you want to open the jump ring. It's not as important, let me open this up so you can see, it's not as important to open them either forward or back like this, but you don't want to open them out like this. If you do, it's really hard to get that jump ring back into a round shape. So forward or back doesn't matter, but definitely not out. Okay. So this oval ring right here, you can see the opening on an oval ring is on the side, okay, right here. And so the thing 
let's say that you have your little, I don't know, your little whatever, your teardrop or a little, I don't know, something that has a point to it, right? A little charm or whatever this is, you know. That little ring, when it's added, that oval through the top, and the join is here, that join is never going to sit down here in the hole of the charm. Does that make sense? So the opening is always on the side, so it's much more secure. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think that, Angela, because also this is a wider side. The wide sides are on the sides here, like this, the longer ones. And there's smaller area here, so your piece is down here, it's hanging here. And so it's, it's, this ring just doesn't, since these are short ends, it just doesn't come open as much, really, right? So um, I've always found that these oval rings work really nicely. And so the oval ones we carry now are a little small, they're the four millimeters. Um, but we're going to be adding some more bigger ones to that as well. So you asked Karen, show closing the cut jump ring. I think this is the one that I cut. Nothing different. Yeah, less tension. That's exactly right, Tammy. Less tension on that opening. So it's, uh, it stays together a lot better. So here's this. And I just close it just like I did all the others. Let's put it on this 2x2, two two, shall we? Yeah, this is the one that's clipped, I think, Gita. That has the little dent that's clipped. I'll just add it. And it's the same thing here. Now, if when I've clipped it off, let me get nice and tight. The end that I clipped is coming up a little bit. It's not as curved as it was before I clipped it. So what I'll do is I'll get my bent chain And I'll give it a little tap. Okay. And then maybe I'll turn it round. Oh, thanks, Mary Ellen. I'm trying. I'm trying. 25 years of teaching, you know. I've been doing this since 1992. I was three when I started. Now you all are supposed to laugh out there. Laugh at that. Yeah, you know, Lynn, we have some new rings and stuff that Janice and I are looking at. So uh, hopefully, if we find some good sterling ones that we like, um, we'll add them for sure. Let me open that up. And so you see, we've got this. And we'll just close this up. And so now I have four links to my little two and two chain. And so, good thing. That's right, Gita. Glad I'm keeping you laughing. So here's my little two, uh, two and two with four links on it, right? Okay. Yeah, okay, there we go. Those are laughing faces. Great, that's what I want to see. Okay. So let's move to um, making rings. But what I did want to show you uh, before we get to that point yeah, and these are all our rings from TiraCast. They're super sturdy, and they're all really well made. Um, just like anything else, you know, when you, like when you're doing seed beads, like when Emily says, oh, you kind of have to go through and make sure that you're not um, using a seed bead that's the right, you know, that you're quality controlling is what I'm trying to say. These jump rings, you don't have to quality control quite as much, right? The quality of them to start is pretty darn good, okay? Um, so that's why we like these TiaraCast, and they're U.S. made. They're really great. Now, let me pull my little pad up. I wanted to show you, I thought about this before I went on, came on, and I wanted to see if it worked. It might be the wrong size bead, but you know me. I like to just jump in. This is that same six millimeter jump ring. You could put tiny beads. This is an eight aught, not quite 
the right size. I think I need a six aught for that. Let me grab one. If you have beads that are large enough, like this little two by two that I was, or the the two by two chain link that I was making, you could add a few beads on there and let it sit. So they, like you could use maybe the hishi, any of those might work. But I've got a six aught seed bead. Let me see. The plating chipping. No, I don't have any, any problem, Susan, with the plating chipping on them. Not at all. Um, they are really super sturdy. But see that? Look at how on that little six mil, or yeah, six millimeter. And see, I can put it right on there. Yeah, you know, we really try and test, you know, everything. It doesn't always happen, but we always want to know about quality because we want to save you the frustration, you know, of, um, of you know, using stuff that isn't great, right? Yeah, you know, Susan, I predominantly, you know, when I'm doing a lot of soldering work and stuff, I, you know, work in sterling a lot and pure copper and stuff. But when I am working uh, bead-wise, um, I do use some base metals, but I do want my base metals to be the plating to be as quality as it can be because, you know, you really want um, the overall look of these pieces, as Janice likes to say, heirloom quality or museum quality, right? Yeah, I love sterling too, Kim. So look what I'm doing here. I just, I don't know, I kind of went off on a tangent. I was going to show you how to measure jump rings, but all of a sudden I'm just adding little six aughts to these. You never know what's going to happen on Free Tip Friday, right? Let's take a look at what I'm creating here. But I bet you guys have jump rings in your stash that you can start working with and playing around with this weekend. So let's take a look what I've got. So this, that's not too bad. Look at that little, let me get in kind of tight. That would make any, a fun little earring design even. I've got that two and two, two, one, two, three, four, four little two and two chains. And then I did four single rings with those uh, six aughts on. And if I put that on an ear wire, bam, I would have a great earring right? And you could use something that has a little more contrast, but those are kind of fun. I'll put an ear wire on that and call it a day. And the ear wire, what I could do is I'd probably balance it up here on the top with a smaller ring. Maybe the, or maybe just a single ring. Maybe not a smaller one, but maybe a single. So let me grab this single. and put it on, just right here, okay? That's ready for an ear wire. Now let me show you real quick before we part ways here. I'll put that over here. I want to show you uh, how to make an, uh, an ear wire in a bind, not an ear wire, a, um, a jump ring, that's what we're working with. And I haven't even pre-prepped a mandrel, so I'm gonna see what I might have to use as a mandrel. Made the ring for Christmas present. We did it bead fest. Oh, I'm so glad. Good. And the Christmas present was well received. I'm so happy. That Tacoma bead fest. Didn't we have fun? That was fun. You guys, that ring class was really, really fun. Oh, I'm so glad. Good, good. I'm going to use this pencil because I like the sides of this, and I'm going to make a big one so you guys can see it. So I'm going to use, this is craft wire that we carry, this is 16 gauge, and I make a lot of 16 gauge jump rings, um, especially with, you know, if I'm soldering them closed or doing other things, but this will be a nice big one so you guys can see it. 
Now this pencil, let's see what the diameter is. Okay, so this is uh, a little caliper that I grabbed from my desk. It's a little um, digital caliper. So let's check the opening size of this or this pen. This pen will make me an eight millimeter. Can you guys see that? Eight millimeter inside diameter jump ring. Okay, because if I'm wrapping my wire around this pencil, the inside diameter of the opening is going to be eight millimeters. Okay, so let me put this down. Might be a little bit big, but if we were making chain or something out of these loops, all right. And yeah, I love the textured rings. You could make these like I'm doing here on this eight millimeter pen, pencil, whatever. And you could use your bench block and hammer to do a little bit of texturing on those. We're also adding in the new year, Janice and I are looking right now, we had a fun meeting with Emily. We um, really had fun picking out some new metal components that we're making pieces out of, and those would be great to texture on your own. Okay, so can you see I've made a little coil right there? I'm gonna slide my pencil out, cut away from the, the wire. Now, Angela, if you're having trouble, you said your handmade jump rings really weren't sturdy. So, and Susan, you're asking what gauge size. So this heavy six gauge, okay, or 16 gauge, is pretty, um, stiff, right? So making a big ring like this with that stiff wire, this is going to stay closed. But if I made that same size jump ring, eight millimeter, and let's say I used, I don't know, let me grab some 20 gauge. I have it across the table from me, my wire box. Let me grab it. 20 gauge in this in this size would be too um, would be too thin, right? Let me grab some twenty. That's eighteen. And now I've got twenty gauge in here somewhere. Here we go. This is twenty right here. So let me make those same jump rings with twenty gauge, okay? See twenty, and look at how easily it's wrapped, right? But if I slide it off the pen and cut it like this, and I were to cut jump rings out of it, those would be those would be pretty thin, right? So they wouldn't really hold together. But if you needed, but a 20 gauge jump ring, let's say, I don't know, maybe I'll use my awl and make some tiny little jump rings here. Oops, I've got a I've got a post-it stuck to my Stuck to my elbow. I'm moving so fast here. If I had my 20 gauge and I was wrapping and making small jump rings out of that 20 gauge and I cut them. See that tinier jump ring, since it's small, it's smaller, it has less surface. Um, it's not going to pull apart, that 20 gauge would work just fine. So bigger jump rings need heavier wire. Smaller jump rings you can get, um, you know, you can make with thinner gauge. A rubber mallet. So Gita, a rubber or a rawhide mallet is something I use a lot when I'm metalsmithing. If I want to move or shape metal without marking it or flattening it. Um, that's when I would use a rubber, a plastic, or a um, or a rawhide mallet. Oh, there's Emily. She's on. Hi, Em. That's awesome. So see how I just jumped on? I'll do it on this big one so you can see how I cut it. Back to my flush cutter. Back to this coil that I made with 16 gauge. I'm going to come in and start my cut just right here at the top. Okay? This is the flush side of my cutter. 
So I'm going to hold it straight and clip. Okay, being very mindful that this wire isn't flying away and hitting me in the head. Okay, now this is what happens. This is what makes a jump ring have a pointy end. If I just kept coming in and clipping and clipping, one side would be flush and the other side would be cut with this side of the plier. So it would give me a point, right? So what I want to do is I want to flip the tool over and free the ring from that side. And can you see super tight there, if I move this aside, see how I have a little point right there that was left from the other side of the cutter. Okay. So what I want to do to cut my second jump ring off is I need to flip that cutter back so that the flush side is cutting off that little point. Put my finger over it clip. Now I flip the tool, flip it over, cut it nice and flat. Can you see how my, how my cutter is straight across there? So I'm going to make a nice straight across cut. You know, that's a good question, Anna. You, would the rubber or rawhide mallet work hard in the jump ring enough to make it strong? Yeah, what I would do is, um, Anna, I would close the ring. Let's close this up. And I would uh, go ahead and close it up nicely, right, so it's all nice and even. And if I needed, whoops, come back here. If I needed to kind of fix the closure to make sure it's closed on all planes, I could. Oh yeah, take it. Um, I could. So then what I would do is I'd place this on my bench block, which I don't have here in front of me, and I would tap it with your plastic or rawhide. Tap, 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 tap. Turn it maybe. Tap, 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 tap. You could also with your um, chasing hammer, like we carry here, just tap, but tap it lightly so that you're not over uh, over flattening that would also work okay so yeah Teresa exactly Teresa's comment was when you keep cutting just like I said cutting through all the way you've got one nice flush end and one nice pointy end so it's the clip and flip that gives you the nice clean jump ring, okay? And I've turned it over and clipped, okay, like that. So you can see I've just made four nice little rings and this could also be a nice two and two link just like this one is, right? So that'll work. So. Angela, you have time to talk design, meaning selecting rings that are in line with the chain being used. You know, I did bring some chain, and I, I wanted to show you this. I, I know this is going a little bit long, and I've got to get into the filling room, but let me show you guys this. This is what I'm going to leave you with, okay? And we will, uh, we can revisit chain, uh, if you'd like, at a new, at a, at a different time, but the chain that I think people have the hardest time with is chain that's super tiny, right? Like I've got this uh, teeny satellite here and this, uh, what's this chain? Jenny, what's this chain? I had it in my head. This one, satellite. not the satellite, this one. This is little keyhole, isn't that what this is? Little keyhole. Um, Kara stole my chain box. <laughs> Just kidding, Kara. I'm not kidding. This is also the bigger satellite here. Okay, so satellites, so these small ones. Okay, so I'm going to get it up nice and tight. Okay, so you guys can see that. 
So, and Susan, uh, work hardened by hand. Let me answer this one before we get to the chain. You know, uh, as an aside, putting on my metal smithing hat, I like to throw all my jump rings in a tumbler. I just do. I think it finishes on them off nicely. Um, you know, there's lots of tumblers out on the market. I'm a big fan of the Laura Tone tumbler. It's a tumbler I've had probably for 25 years, uh, and it works beautifully. So, but that being said, if I just need to make one or two jump rings like I'm doing here, or if I'm doing jump rings like this, maybe for chain, stuff like that, then, you know, I may not tumble. It just really kind of depends on where I am in production. And, you know, a tumbler isn't necessary to make uh, to make good jump rings. Um, but, you know, it's a next step if you guys are ready, you know, to kind of jump in to for some more serious metal work. Um, a tumbler isn't a bad way to go. Okay. And again, yep, that Laura Tone. I have a Laura Tone. I think it's a 450 or something like that. They're under 100 bucks. Um, as I say, I've had mine 25 years probably. Okay. Uh, so getting back to this chain, Angela, that's exactly what I would do is chain this small. I would wire wrap because chain links this tiny the tiniest jump ring that I would need to use wouldn't hold anything. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> it's my, my emphatic, uh, oh, what's it called? I don't know. My emphatic inflection. Um, so I would use, for something small like that, I'm grabbing a 26 gauge. I think. Now my 26 gauge wire, I had it, I had it here. Uh, that's a good question, Karen. Let me see. This is the six millimeter that I was working with. Let's measure. That's why I was saying Janice and I are going to go through in the new year and really make sure that all of our jump ring sizes are right. The Laura Tone 3A. Okay, Art, then that would be, then that's the one, 3A. All the Laura Tone brands are really good. So our measurements um, that we have here, Karen, are all outside diameter. So this is a six millimeter outside diameter, and this inside diameter, I'm guessing, is a, about a five millimeter. Let me see. Let me do this with the points. Maybe about a four, about four, probably about a 4.5 millimeter inside diameter. Okay. So let me grab my skinny gauge wire. Well, I thought I had some fine gauge in 26 sitting here, but the bead gremlins seem to have come up and taken it. But here's some 26 in silver, so I'll just use that because that's what's at hand. This, Rhonda, it's just called a digital caliper. Um, we're thinking about actually adding these to our product mix. Um, I like them a lot. We use them around here at the office for measuring, um, and I really like the digital one. So yeah, digital caliper. I like it a lot. Uh, so I'm going to just cut a quick piece of this 26 gauge, and what I'm looking for, I'm going to tighten this up so you guys can really see it. Maybe it's a good thing it's not the same color. If this little keyhole, I want to make sure that I've got some movement in there. If I don't have movement, if I use a wire that's too um, thick, I'm not going to have any movement on the end of my chain, and this is going to be a place where my necklace might break. Okay, so that's why I've got 26. If I used 24, let's see if 24 fits. Right, you just have to test it. There's no hard and fast rule. Right, I'm testing things all the time. A lot of times, I guess, but you just have to get it to get you know, the wire and the beads together. This 24 gauge, 
also works. Visually, it looks a little heavier, right, um, on the end of the chain. So for visual, um, so it goes together, I might say that 26 gauge, having it be a little finer, might look better for me, might look better, okay? And I would just make a wire wrap loop here on the end. And just like uh, you've seen me do a million times before, you could just make a little wire wrap loop on the end. I use the very tip of my round nose pliers so I don't have a huge loop. Okay. Center it. Slide on my chain. This is also a good way to connect multiple pieces of chain together. Like I could get several strands into this loop. Okay. So taking it from a single strand or a multiple strand piece of chain to a single strand. And then of course I just wire wrap this closed. Yeah, it makes a big difference, uh, Angela, exactly. This 26 gauge is much more in line with the size or the, you know, the scope of the, of the wire that the chain is made from. So I think visually it works better. Then I could add a little bead. I've got this little, that A dot that I was trying earlier. And so you can see it just goes on there. And then I would do the tiniest of wire wraps here. And it's much sturdier, I'll tell you, than a jump ring. Now this is the part where your clasp would go on. Let me grab it. All right, and I will just add this on. So this comes in. Get a little wider so you guys can see that. But see, there's plenty of movement there. And I'll hold it and just wire wrap it closed. And if I wanted to make a decorative end, maybe I'd just keep, I don't know, I've got plenty of wire here. Let me make it deliberate. Wrap it around a couple of times, I don't know. All right, kind of go around that bead. Yeah, you could definitely do that. You could add a little wire wrap at the end. That's right, Tammy. Did I give you that piece of advice? I dole out advice so readily I can't ever remember. There we go. So something like that looks a little more deliberate. Right? Since this is a little bit of a bigger clasp on here, I've kind of made this a design feature of the piece, right? And then it connects to the chain, right? Wire wrap versus jump ring. Yeah, you know, Kim, it's 2018. Make a resolution. Get that wire out and, you know, practice. I mean, these little, I know that you guys have little bits of wire and stuff hanging around. And you know, when I teach my metal smithing, I teach it a lot with little samplers and stuff. So it's the same way when you do kind of beaded stuff, you know, kind of make yourself a little sampler. Now, since I did this, I'm gonna just kind of, maybe I'll cut this off and I'll have this as a little reminder of, you know, put it on my design board and go, oh, right, I like that closure. I'm gonna use that again, okay? So just to reiterate before I sign off, because I've, I'm gonna, jump back into other office stuff. We're bustling around for the end of the year. Okay, So we talked about uh, different sizes of jump rings, creating this little 2x2 two two chain link, putting little 6 aught seed beads on those single rings. This would make a fun little earring. Then we talked about finer chain, um, doing that wire wrap bead closure, and of course, we talked about making our own jump rings, looking, um, using the flush cutter 
to um, make those nice flush cuts so you've got a nice serviceable ring. Okay. Oh, you want to see my ring, Ma? You did spy that. That's my old, my grand's ring, Rose, and that belonged to her grandmother. So it's a pretty old ring, but I thought it would be a good uh, ring to wear at the end of the year. So my little my little talisman, keeping my grand and my great-grand and my mom, everybody near me, right on my finger. So it was fun. Um, thanks, Gita, for linking that Free Tip Friday. I do sometimes, I like to do jump rings on Free Tip Friday, I think. Um, I think it was fun. Okay, let me move this around so I can see you guys before I close off. Um, let me see if I can, without, maybe, there we go, moving, I'm moving around, I'm moving around, there we are. All right, look at that. Hopefully that wasn't too inelegant when I, when I did that. Let me see if I can get this, if I can get myself situated. Am I situated? Looks okay. Whoops, wrong way. There we go. I can work that camera. There we are. All right, perfect. All righty. Okay, you guys. So, that's it. That's a wrap on 2017. Free Tip Friday is in the books, the last one. Uh, I did want to tell you guys uh, real quick, um, make sure if you haven't opened your newsletter yet, please do so because we're having our end of the year sale and it's going to go through Tuesday. Um, so jump in there, make sure you've got your uh, discount codes for that. And the first week next Thursday, actually probably Wednesday, Thursday of next week, we've got a big announcement. We've got a really cool thing that we've been working on for so long um, and it's going to launch next week. So make sure if you haven't jumped over to beadshop.com and signed up for a newsletter, do so. So you, that's a great way to stay in communication with us. And we'll let you know what we're going to announce. It's going to be super fun. And I think you guys are going to be really happy about it. We are over here for sure. Well, thanks you guys for a great year. It's been a great 2017. We're working hard behind the scenes to make 2018 an even better year here at beadshop.com. Uh, have a safe and happy new year. And Emily and I will see you uh, for the first broadcast of the year on Wednesday. We're going to be making tassels, tassel necklaces. It's going to be really, really fun. Let me scan these last things. Yes, happy new year to all all y'all, all of you guys. And if you didn't get to watch this whole broadcast, you can find it a little bit later. Karen will post it up on our YouTube channel um, where you can find all of our free tip Fridays um, and uh, get some learning going on. All right, you guys. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next year. Bye-bye.